Welcome to the Queer Conversation podcast brought to you by Lotol Media, a show where we discuss all things queer. I am your host, Silke Bader, a publisher and producer in the LGBTQI space in Australia for the past 30 years. We were violent, angry, addicted to liquor and drugs and bad behavior. I wanted to find the stories that were about my people. It was hard to be a baby rider in the early women's movement, which was so hungry for love stories, and I couldn't do them. Quote by Dorothy Allison. Radcliffe Hall. The Well of Loneliness. The Well of Loneliness. The Well of Loneliness. The Well of Loneliness. The Well of Loneliness was kind of the entree to lesbian literature for so many people. At 50. My name is Lisa Marie Evans, and I am from Arkansas in the United States. Lesbian filmmaker, and I'm here in Sydney, my first time in Australia. And I'm here to screen my film, In Her Words, 20th Century Lesbian Fiction. And it's a feature documentary on lesbian fiction. Thank you so much for, for coming in. Your documentary that you are um, about to show Australia, tell us what it's all about. Yeah, so um, it's the title is In Her Words, 20th Century Lesbian Fiction. It's a feature film, and it focuses on lesbian fiction from the 1920s through the 1990s. There's a lot of lesbian fiction. It started to expand in the 90s. So there's so much more literature, and there could be many other documentaries, and I'm excited for those to happen. Um, but yeah, we're focusing on 20th century. Mm. What was your first lesbian fiction that you read? The first lesbian fiction that I read, I would say, was a Sarah Waters, Tipping the Velvet. Okay. I just love how your documentary starts off. I can't believe what an iconic book that was. Yeah. There's various covers of it, um, and so that one is, is great, too. And Yeah, I didn't even know about The Well of Loneliness until I started making the film. And so I read all the books in the film. Um, but yeah, that was a groundbreaking novel. It's a certain age, like a generation who used to read that. Yeah. I think you're too young. Yes. Yeah. 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 But I've read it. So, yeah, yeah, excellent. <laughs> I'm catching up. So you decided there's a need for a documentary to discover the evolution of lesbian fiction. Can you... Tell me, what did you find was, was a, a major discovery when you made this, um, this documentary? Yeah, um, so I'll back up a little bit and tell you how the documentary came to be. So Marianne Martin, she's an author, a publisher, and she's also an author featured in the film. She and um, Sandra Moran, uh, after Nancy Garden passed, one of the authors in the film, they decided there's a huge need to document lesbian authors while they're living. So they started a presentation, they put together an outline which became the backbone to the film, and uh, they presented it at a women's music festival, a couple other presentations, and they wanted to make it into a film. Um, Sandra, who was 46 at the time, was diagnosed with cancer and died four weeks later. So. Marianne, after a little bit, Marianne and Cheryl, who was Sandra's widow, picked the project back up. They were looking for a filmmaker, and they found me. And so we met, I met Cheryl in person, Marianne virtually, and then we were filming uh, our first interview a month later. Did you interview on an international basis, or is this very American, U.S. focused? So the film is more U.S. focused. We interview um, Sarah Waters in London. And then we start with uh, The Well of Loneliness, so it kind of does a full circle. Talking about lesbian fictions and, you know, my, my generation, the only book that we were able to read was The Well of Loneliness. But, my God, today, <laughs> the books yeah. that are out there and I guess ever since, um, you know, self-publishing or that you can, you don't have to rely on a publisher to take your book um, made a massive difference. So I actually get it why you probably stopped at the 20th century, at the end, at 1990, because it would have been, like, could you could you would have just seen a massive spike, just before the end of. Is that right? Yeah, it is. In the 90s, there's more authors in the 90s 
than the rest of the decades. Um, and even then, it was hard to fit. You know, it's only 90, it's 99 minutes, and so it's a lot of information packed into 99 minutes. Uh, yeah, we had to be selective, and, you know, there's authors that could have been in there, but there's just time, budget, and all of that. That's a piece of it. And for me, coming into this film, I knew about 10 to 15 percent of the information that's in the film. So Mary Ann was sort of our expert in that because she's been in the literature world for so long, and I was new coming into it. So it was it was really nice in that regard to go back and forth so that we could you know, present the information for somebody who was not familiar with it and that they would be able to understand and ingest it as well. But yeah, it's a, it's a lot of information, a lot of learning for me too. It was a great experience. And, you know, it, it was, it was a wonderful experience. Um, it was also sad, like learning all of this that I was sort of deprived of, I think that we're all deprived of because it's not available in schools and the media or hasn't been. And it still isn't, you know, often in the forefront. Mm. There are lesbian characters in every book now. And, you know, but it's really interesting. And I love that you have taken this on as an as making a film about it and to archive this history, which I think is really amazing. And and I can just see that universities would pick this up as well. Yeah, that's the goal is to get it into universities, curriculum, libraries. And then we also have the whole log of the full interviews that we'd like to put into archives as well, just to keep, you know, to put the information out there and make it available for people. You would, as, as you said, too, you would have interviewed so many different people, but not everybody made the cut, right? Everybody who we interviewed got into the film. But, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of other authors that could have been in the film. But there's just, you know, time, money and availability, too. And time of the actual what you can include in a film. One of the main person that goes throughout the documentary is Lillian Federman is the narrator throughout the film and the LGBT historian. She is a wealth of knowledge. Um, yeah. And just even trying to consolidate the information that she presented and cut that down, too. That was a challenge. And who else? So run us through who else did you, did you interview? First interview is Lee Lynch. She's an author. And we interviewed Jewel Gomez. We interviewed Rita Mae Brown. Um, and we interviewed so many. Um, Mary Ann K. Martin, who's also the filmmaker for it. Ilana Dykelman. Um, she passed away. Claire McNabb, who's Australian. Um, we interviewed her, and she had Parkinson's at the time. Uh, so her speech was a little hard to understand, so it's, it's subtitled. And she just passed away recently as well. Would have orders that written in 1920 or 1940 or something, and then others in 1960, 70s, 80s. Yeah. They, what, what feedback? Like, how did they describe how the how the time has changed or how their writing has changed? Yeah, so Marianne and Sandra had done an original outline and they wanted to um, include historical events to get an understanding of what the time was like for the authors at the time they were writing to see how society impacted them and then how in turn that impacted their work and their stories. So, yes, it, it, it this The authors expand more throughout each decade. And so, um, and then with the, the history outline of it too, you see how it's, it's really interesting because Lillian just gives this amazing perspective. I mean, looking at the depression era and how, um, you know, women weren't able to get jobs then because they were giving them more to men who had families, but that also allowed women sort of a cover if they needed to live with another woman to, um, to make money and to get work. So it's interesting how she'll, she'll show these events and how I, I never would have thought of that before. And we asked all the authors the same questions throughout. A lot of the findings I saw were the influence that the authors had on each other and how that, um, you can come to see that at the end. So they were paving the way for each other, which has paved the way for us as well. Mm. Wow, well, yeah, no, the the beginning of the documentary does talk about those 
um, uh, significant events in history that changed for women, s such as the suffrage mov movement, uh, the Great Depression, World War. Yeah, looking at the World War II, that impact, and then the 50s, um, the push for women to be back in the home once the war was over, and what that felt like for them. So, yeah, they all had, the, all the authors were asked the same question, so it was interesting to see how they, the similarities between them all, too, really. It's been really interesting that I didn't expect is such an interest in Europe for, for the film. So our first screening was in Italy, and then we've had three screenings in Italy. Yeah, so mm. I, I wasn't expecting that. Um, and it's screened in more countries than it has in, in states, in the United States as well. You developed or written this this documentary throughout COVID? We, I, fortunately, um, before COVID, we had done all the interviews. So that worked out. And then um, editing took a little bit longer than I, <laughs> than I had anticipated, which I'm sure you know how that goes, editing these as well. Uh, and then during COVID, yeah, we were finishing up the editing, doing another cut, and then we had to get media insurance and do the um, illustrations and things like that. And you said in Italy you had a great response. So, yeah. so far, where did you screen and what are some memorable responses that you gotten from the audience? Uh, so we screened, our first screening was in Italy. It was in Rome for the Imaginaria Film Festival. And then uh, a professor from Viterbo, um, Italy, went to that festival and saw it and wanted to bring it to their university for GenderCom, which is an international conference on gender and communication. And so they brought me in for that. And then the same night um, it was screening in Viterbo, it was also screening in Florence at a festival. So where can people download or watch the movie? So they can go to our website, which is inherwordsthefilm.com, and sign up for the newsletter, which we promise we'll put out <laughs> soon. It's on my list uh, to keep up with screenings. And, and we'll also bring it in. So if people want to request screenings, then we can set that up as well. What's next for you then? I mean, that would have been a massive massive project for you, but it would be so exciting and for you to see, oh my God, there is so much more I could do in that area or in another area. Is there anything bubbling away? Yeah. I mean, I think that my work is rooted in um, documenting LGBTQ culture and celebrating that as well. So it will be in that area. I really want to take this film and um, help give it success and live to its full potential. potential help it live to its full potential and get it out there for people. So I'm going to spend some time because this is like you have a baby. This film is a baby and then you have to let it grow up and get out there into the world. And so that's that's the piece that I'm going to focus on with this, too. And then, you know, I also have a full time job. Uh, luckily, I work with artists and in, in arts and culture. And so um, that's a creative environment. I still when I was making this film, I was a full time artist. Uh, so I had the time to dedicate to this. So now it's it's a little bit different balancing that out. Um, so that allows me, with the time that I have, to really focus on this film. Mm -hmm. So the next project is, I don't know yet, but stay tuned. We'll put, we're going to put a reading list online. Um, all the authors and their, their books are listed online in the About section so that uh, the audience can see who's in the film. It's fascinating that you documented that. Yeah, and really, was. because it was different at one stage. Yeah, and it's, you know, since making the film, we've had four authors who were in the film pass away. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's important to, to document that. And it's so that crucial. is this sort of living, mm -hmm. you know, historical piece. Um, yeah, and you know, what's really interesting, too, is like when you're talking about the well of loneliness and your story with that, the way that the film... Well, the, the authors in their books, um, but the film presents that. It's how these books have touched so many lives, you know, and how it's changed so many lives for that. So I really love to hear those stories about, you know, where they were. I mean, I can remember where I was when I was reading Sarah Waters. You know, I was in the, at a museum in Florida with friends, and somebody loaned me the book. Um, so, yeah, they're beautiful stories and just the, mm. the impact that it's had throughout. Yeah. Yeah, go and read lots of lesbian literature and support lesbians and queer authors. Mm. You did not touch up on gay male literature. Did that exist at the same time or was it very different? 
Yeah, Plus, it did. I I did not. I think that there could be a film on that as well. Um, but I know that there's one. It touched upon it on in one section with Leslie and Newman, who's an author that we interviewed, and she had a children's book. Heather has two mommies, and that um, had a big controversy. It was released with another male book. Um, I can't remember the name, but uh, they. So that just touched upon that literature a little bit. But, yeah, there was definitely, in the pulp fiction times, there was a lot of gay male literature um, in that. So, But I'm not I'm by no means an expert in that. Well, well done. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you for the chat. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you would like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from us, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, or Facebook using the tag at Media, or head over to our website, lotl.com. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>